Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chatbox. I'm David Cruz. It is that time of year again when we bring out the pumpkins and the goblins and ghouls prepare for their moment. I'm not even talking about Halloween. I'm talking about election time. And this year, it's the midterms. So our emphasis is on politics this week. And for that, we turn to our dynamic duo of political punditry, the men behind the people running things and running for things. Chris Russell is a Republican strategist and co-founder of Checkmate Strategies, and Leroy Jones is the chairman of the New Jersey State Democratic Committee. They are collectively known as Russell and Jones, and it's a pleasure to welcome them back to chat box. Gents, good to see you both again. You too. Thanks, Dave. Good to see you. Good to see you always, Chris. It's been a while, you, man. You too, I know. Leo. Keep us on. <laughs> All right, so it's about to get super hot on the airwaves and in our mailboxes as we move closer to Election Day proper. Uh, let me get each of you to hip us to what you think the landscape looks like for your party in New Jersey uh, less than a month out. We flipped the coin and we decided to go by alphabetical order. So, Chris Russell, let's start with you. <laughs> What's <laughs> sure, going no. on? What's going on now? And what are we going to see when the returns start to come in on, on November 8th? Listen, la last year, there was a lot of momentum for Republicans across the state, uh, picking up legislative seats and local seats and running close in the governor's race. And I think you're seeing a continuation of that. Uh, Democrats in the in the uh, off season here did a, a, a good job uh, gerrymandering the congressional map to their favor. But I think Republicans are uh, on the move in a bunch of these seats in three, five, 11. I think Tom Kane is a favorite in seven. So I, I think the, the playing field might be a little larger than Leroy thought it was back in January. Chairman? Now you know, now you know I have a different of, opi different of yeah. opinion. Uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, he is like somewhere in paradise. We talked about the tan. So, you know, Chris, you need to take a vacation <laughs> because all that stuff does not compute at all. Uh, you know, Democrats, uh, you know, hold a 10 to majority here in, in the state. Uh, you know, that will continue. I do have to say that, uh, you know, the CD7, uh, you know, that is a battleground. Uh, you know, one that, uh, you know, I believe will surprise a lot of people, uh, you know, come, uh, you know, when all the votes are counted uh, after Election Day. I, I can tell you, David, three, I, I'm, I work in three for Bob Healy. That is going to be a close race. Uh, we feel good about the progress. And like I said, I think there's a couple other sleepers out there. It's uh, things that started moving Republicans way nationally. And that that kind of wave nationally helps Republicans here in New Jersey. I, see, right, I, want, I, I want don't to get agree to... with that. I think that there's a change nationally. We've seen, uh, you know, th there's a tightening of the, you know, the national polls when you're talking about, uh, you know, generic Republicans and Dems. But, uh, you know, New Jersey, uh, you know, is an outlier. And, uh, you know, you, you know, you will see that, uh, you know, play its way out, uh, you know, come, you know, through as we go through this election process. And, you know, we, you know, we're in an election cycle right now, right? So people are voting right now. Uh, you know, we've ID'd, uh, you know, tre tremendous number of voters in CD11 and CD7, uh, you know, as well as some of, you know, the other uh, battleground districts. And, uh, you know, they trend them. Uh, you know, vote by mail has been, uh, you know, coming in, you know, pretty heavily. And uh, they tr they tend, tr they trend them. So, right. uh, you know, I expect that as we, you know, move forward with this, 10-2 will uh, prevail, uh, you know, come election day. I want to get to some more of those predictions in a bit, but... Let me stick with you here, uh, Chairman. Uh, we've seen polling that says voters are worried about what's happening in their pockets, less so than some other issues like abortion. Uh, I know you're not handling any of the congressional campaigns directly, but why are Democrats so focused on an issue that many here say is, in New Jersey, say is down on their list of concerns? No, I, I think those uh, polling trends that you talk about, Dave, are uh, more national than anything. I've seen the national polls the other day, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, yes, the economy plays uh, and looms large. That doesn't mean that, uh, you know, Democrats here don't, uh, you know, don't understand and, uh, you know, and respect, uh, you know, that uh, that that uh, phenomenon. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, when we're, you know, when we're talking to, uh, you know, women, particularly women, uh, you know, young women, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, they feel very strongly about, uh, you know, the violation of uh, abortion rights that the Supreme Court, uh, you know, seem to have trampled on. And, uh, you know, so that becomes a rights campaign. You know, a lot of people will try to blame, uh, you know, the, uh, the president, uh, you know, even on a pandemic for that matter, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, is a contributor to, uh, you know, what we see in the, uh, you know, the economy and inflation, uh, you know, the Ukraine plays, uh, you know, plays quite heavily with uh, respect to that. So, uh, you know, yeah, we, you know, we're focused on the economy as well. 
But when you talk about rights, uh, you know, whether they be civil rights, uh, you know, reproductive freedoms, you know, those things loom large uh, in this particular election in New Jersey. Meanwhile, Chris, candidates in your party have kind of been walking the tightrope on the abortion issue. They say they're pro-choice, but then they go on to list the restrictions uh, that take choice away from pregnant people. Can you be both pro-choice and then restrict that choice? I actually think that's the mainstream position in the country and in the, and in the state that people believe that there should be a right to an abortion in most cases, but they believe in restrictions, things like parental notification for a minor, uh, no no late term abortions. They want doctors, not non doctors. I think these are mainstream positions. So I think that's something that Republicans need to articulate, and I think have. I think back to what Leroy said about the economy. Um, listen, in New Jersey, we have, we have one of the highest tax states in the country. So when inflation hits, it hits harder here. It hits harder in New Jersey. People are paying over $700 more a month, according to uh, the analysis I saw, uh, more than they were a year ago in terms of their household uh, expenses. And when you live in between, uh, as we all know and, and fight with as campaign operatives, we know how dominant New York and Philadelphia are as markets uh, in this state. We're kind of ha- uh, sandwiched between them. They see what's happening in New York City with the crime issue. They see what's happening in Philadelphia with the crime issue. That Make no mistake, that impacts races in Bergen County and Gloucester County and Burlington County. And, and I think Democrats you know, you know, here in New Jersey have to pay attention to that, that people see crime as an issue and they're concerned about it. And when you talk about crime, uh, you know, you, you can't you know, help but to talk about guns. And Democrats have been you know, strong uh, you know, on, uh, you know, on guns. And um, you know, and making sure that uh, you know guns are out of the hands of uh, you know people that uh, you know have no need for them because uh, of the harm that it do- that it does, uh, you know. But the, you know, when we talk about reproductive freedoms, let's you know let's let's look at this picture that you know we you know we three men, three men discussing you know what uh, you know a, a woman's right is, uh, you know a woman's choices, how a woman is going to uh, you know deal with health issues that impact her body. Uh, you know that is the you know that is the irony in this whole thing that many of uh, you know the uh, you know the the issue that uh, you know stems around abortion are being discussed and decided by men and that's dead wrong. But think about that. But Leroy, I think the one thing you you would even admit things like parental notification for minors, late term abortions, non doctors performing abortions, these are not mainstream positions. They're they're for their extreme positions. And Democrats in in that's the in, uh, in, in state, that's the but, but, that's, side, but that's where that's where your party's been voting because that you got you're, you're trying to placate your far left base. And right now, that's not where this issue is. There's there's a middle ground in abortion that I think the the rational, reasonable people in the middle want want both sides to find. We just believe in choice. Uh, and, a, and a woman's right to choose, you know, how she deals with, uh, you know, her health concerns and her health issues that, that impact her body. And a 15-year-old right, girl probably wants her uh, parents probably want to know what's going on with her if she's if she gets pregnant. But Here, the, you know, my, once again, three men discussing, that. You know, discussing a woman's, uh, you know, prerogative about her body is not right. That's a point well taken, uh, Chairman. Here's my my follow up to you on, on that, Chris. These restrictions. Who gets to say? Is it the government that gets to say what the restrictions are and sets penalties? I mean, you know, the the bottom line is that you don't have a lot of women carrying a child uh, or or a fetus to eight months and then decide randomly that they want to have an abortion. That's a really extreme case. But even in an extreme case like that, shouldn't the woman and the doctor have the right and prerogative to to make that decision? Why does government have to get involved in that? Absolutely. Listen, by, by, by the Supreme Court doing what they did, they returned this to the states. So what happens by that system is the state legislatures and governors are going to decide these laws. That's that's the system. That's but, the, that is the system have, we have here. You have, you have individuals in your own party that's talking about a national ban on abortion. And, and, and you guys and have individuals sweeping, in your party. And, and, that and, is, you, uh, and Leroy, yeah, you have individuals that is in your party talking and, about and, uh, expanding things, access uh, to late-term abortions. abortions. They just don't vote well uh, you know, in our society today. Particularly, and, Chris, well, like I said, you, you guys have people talking in the extremes, too. That's what I'm saying. I think there's a middle ground position here that Republican candidates are talking about. All right, let me move this on because uh, the chairman makes a good point about three guys talking about uh, women's reproductive rights. But uh, let's talk about Donald Trump. Chairman, he's, Him again. he's still the name that comes up all the time. Democrats have used him as the boogeyman for years now. Shouldn't you be talking about your president and the things that he's done and or hasn't done? 
Well, you know, Donald Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving for you know for our party. Uh, you know, and uh, you know he he can't seem to get out of the way of solid Republicans. Uh, you know, pu Republicans who believe in good government, who believe in uh, you know the you know the rights that are bestowed. Of, uh, upon us by the Constitution, uh, you know, but when you have, uh, you know, that MAGA side of the party that, uh, you know, just gets in the way and Donald Trump is always out at the forefront of that, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's the, you know, the hearings on uh, the January 6th, uh, you know, um, you know, issue, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, or other things that, uh, you know, this Donald Trump just cannot you know, he cannot move himself out of the discussion. And that hurts Chris's party. And I know Chris won't probably say that, but, uh, you know, but deep down inside, I know he believes that. Chris, now, Chris, I, I, I got to give you a chance to to tell the chairman what you <laughs> believe deep down. Of course, as, as we, we always have a good time doing this, but I would tell you that right now you have Republicans uh, don't have any control here in New Jersey, don't have control in Washington. It's one party rule. Democrats control the presidency. Both, ho both houses in Congress uh, and here in New Jersey, the governorship and both houses of the legislature. So I, I would apply the pottery barn rule here, which is if you broke it, you bought it. And I think Democrats own this stuff right now. And, and voters are smart enough to figure that out. They know who's in charge and they're not going to go back and look backwards. They're going to look forwards. Meanwhile, Chris, your side seems to want to have it both ways. Uh, is it hate the player in this case, not the game? I mean, Trump is bad, but his politics and his policies are good. Is that the Republican so, line? I think a lot of people believe that, right? I think some of the policies were good. Look, economically, right now, where would you rather be? Two years ago or today, right? Or three years ago or today? So, I mean, I, I think in terms of the economic policies, yes. I think in terms of President Trump's uh, personality, no, there are a lot of people who were turned off. I, I'll sit here and concede that. But I think the policies right now, if you ask people to look at their 401k or their retirement savings, I'm sure they'd like to take a time machine back a little bit. We cannot ignore the fact that, uh, you know, this election is about the preservation of our democracy. And Donald Trump, uh, you know, was at the forefront of uh, attempting to destroy our democracy. And, uh, you know, he's still out there. The boogeyman's still out there. Uh, you know, he's lurking, looming, and uh, he just will not, uh, you know, unplug himself, uh, you know, from, uh, you, know, a, uh, you know, a party that, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, had his place in leadership. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, this man, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, been the destruction of, uh, you know, a large part of the Republican Party. Right, and let, uh, you know, that MAGA side of it just does not work. Let me move on from that. Uh, I'm running out of time here. Voting uh, has already begun. Has mm -hmm. the new voting schedule changed the way um, either you approach campaigning? I mean, does it mean more social media and other methods playing into the schedule? Let me start with you, Chris. Yeah, listen, 100% has changed. And, and I'll say, you know, Democrats have been better at the at the vote by mail and the early voting than Republicans. We have to get our act together in that regard. I know there's a lot of effort underway. Chairman Hugan, uh, the Republican state chairman, is working hard to do that. Others in the counties are working hard to do that. But we have to do better because now Election Day is not just the first Tuesday in November. It's six weeks of Election Day. And, and I think both parties, Leroy, would probably agree. It, election Day is every day uh, after ballots go out. So that's changed uh, changed things dramatically as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I, Chris, you know, uh, I, I co-sign all that. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, moving, uh, you know, through cycles of, uh, you know, campaign strategy, whether it's vote by mail, uh, you know, we'll pivot to early voting, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, we'll have boots on the ground on the last day to, uh, you know, pull out all those that, uh, you know, haven't cast their ballot by, you know, by mail or come in early. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, been a great change, uh, you know, in uh, our election strategies to date. All right. Prediction time. Uh, I know you have to say that your side is going to sweep all the races. Here's my question. Uh, where are we going to be surprised on uh, election night, either in Jersey or nationally and why? Uh, Chairman, real quick from you. So I think, uh, you know, I think here in Jersey, uh, I think CD7 will, uh, you know, will be the uh, surprise of the evening. We'll see Tom Malinowski, uh, you know, the uh, the winner. It probably won't be election night, but, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, you know, decided when all the votes are counted. Uh, you know, nationally, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Georgia is, uh, you know, is a, uh, you know, a, a hot spot. Uh, you know, our neighboring, uh, you know, state, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Fetterman will take the, uh, you know, that, that night in, as a victory. Um, all right. You know, and, um, you know, I think those are the two that, uh, you know, stand out in my mind nationally. All right, Chris, let's make it interesting. Um, complete this sentence. Chairman, I bet you a Rutz Hut Ripper that what? That Republicans in New Jersey have more than three seats in Congress after Election Day. Well, what right, is right. he what is he betting me, David? 
a, a, a Rutz Hut Ripper. That's I'm not sure what that is, but I'll eat it anyway. Yeah, what is that, Chris? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but hot but is I'm going to win it, whatever it is. I'm <laughs> a ripper is a hot dog that is deep fried. It is a concoction oh. that will probably kill okay. you if you eat more than one, but they're quite tasty. Okay. All right, Chris well, Russell, Leroy Jones, good to see you guys both. Thanks for coming on with us. All right, see fantastic. You guys. Good seeing you, Chris. Dave, you thanks. Too, Always great. Men, as you can see, are still at the forefront of the state's political narrative, but one former New Jersey lawmaker is working to make that a little more balanced by creating a PAC to promote female candidates for election politically and financially. It's called Loretta PAC, and why not? Its founder is former Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg, and she joins us on Chatbox today. Senator, always good to see you. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you want to promote the next generation of troublemakers, women only, yes? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, as you probably know, I retired from the state Senate uh, back at the beginning of this year. And as I thought about how I was going to be spending my retirement, besides doing Zoom meetings with various organizations or hopefully with good groups like New Jersey Spotlight and Chatbox, I thought that really one of the best ways I can contribute is actually raising money for candidates, mostly in local office, not statewide, not federal, we have many other fundraising groups to call on, but women who run for office locally for their town councils, for school board, and helping to give them the resources to run good campaigns. So I had the first fundraiser of the Loretta PAC um, a few weeks ago, and we were privileged to give the first round of contributions to a group of women who are diverse in terms of uh, uh, racially, age-wise, experience-wise, and throughout the state. And uh, hopefully these small contributions will be an acknowledgement that they have many voices in the state behind them. So two things jump out at me from that. Um, a, um, why will more women running uh, more things make New Jersey better? And why the emphasis on local elections? Oh, well, to answer the second part of your question first, I think the emphasis on local elections became important. I, I know what it's like to run for council election. And I think people who run for council elections have less resources to call upon. State legislators, uh, con uh, Congress people, senators have much wider fundraising apparatus that they can call upon. So that's why uh, we decided in this PAC to concentrate on women running for local office. And why more women? Because we don't have enough voices in the state of New Jersey. I really believe that women have unique experiences that have to do with being mothers, being caregivers, being sisters, daughters, aunts, in so many family uh, dynamics that we just bring different voices that are really important. We are more generally, these are all generalizations and you can always find an exception to the rule, but we are more, we are generally more particip participatory, open, accountable. And I think women uh, help to balance government, certainly local government. We know about our children's schools, we know about the physical planning of our communities and how we get in and out of supermarket parking lots and all the other mundane things of life that make a good council person. Yeah, you touch on something there. There are women I know in elected positions, one in particular who I always say, hey, you should run for a higher office. She says she would, 
But the choices women are forced to make, and you touched on this a little bit, are more difficult than those that most men have to make in terms of getting into, uh, into politics and elected office and government. Parenting, household management, soccer, softball, drama club, dance. I mean, you got to change that culture too, right? So that dads and partners become more a part of that, no? How do you get to that? Yeah, well, I think we are getting to that, David. I see it in my daughter's generation and beyond. Uh, I think you'll see more dads at soccer games and volleyball games cheering their daughters and sons on than you would have seen in past generations. Um, so I, I think the culture is changing because I think our daughters have changed it. Uh, in more cases than not, they are working moms. So they, <clears throat> by necessity, have to uh, change that culture. So I think we see it, we are seeing a change. But is it more difficult for women? Absolutely. And that's why we have to accommodate women. And I thought a bill that Senator Teresa Ruiz sponsored went by with not a lot of notice and that was to allow candidates to take money out of their campaign funds to pay for babysitting. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a phenomenal step forward. As I said, that it kind of went by with very little notice, but it helps to change the culture. If you can take money out to go to political events or, I don't know, attend or to, some convention. Or to take 20 people to Puerto Rico for the Super Bowl I was uh, trying and, to and have your of, campaign pay for it. Yeah, I was as, trying as to just an example. Proper, I was trying to think of the proper analogy, but you filled in the blank perfectly. Oh, good. All right. So your focus is on electing progressives. What about promoting conservative women? Um, do you leave that to the GOP? Yes, I leave that to the GOP. Our one um, caveat and that I put forth to each of these candidates was that you are pro-choice. We are not asking that that become a centerpiece of your campaign, of each individual campaign, but that is the only caveat for seeking support from uh, the, the Loretta PAC. Are there so, different variations locally where one could be considered conservative on property taxes or right. progressive on school issues, whatever? Zoning. I'll, I'll leave that to the locals, but this is definitely a Democratic pack. So something that you uh, were really a spearhead uh, was this effort at addressing the toxic environment that existed in the Murphy campaign, uh, and in government in New Jersey in general, the continuing use of NDAs, uh, a bill before Congress called the Speak Out Act, which bans them from covering harassment, et cetera. What is the environment in your sense, a couple of years, a year or so removed from being in it hip deep? As an outsider, how do you observe things right now in New Jersey in that regard? Well, I think we've improved the environment in New Jersey, but have we improved it enough? The answer is no. We outlawed non-disclosure agreements in the case of sexual harassment, et cetera, in New Jersey. They are outlawed. And uh, in fact, the federal push right now is kind of based on our NDAs. But there is a very large segment of the legislation we passed that was left undone. It was passed by the Senate, but not by the Assembly. And that was to set up an apparatus to deal with issues of sexual harassment and such in the campaign environment, because there was very little way to regulate that. Campaigns are not really part of the state apparatus. They're kind of individual. So the bill calls for the Election Law Enforcement Commission to set up an apparatus to look at this in campaigns a place where women or men could come with complaints. That bill was held up at the 11th hour in the assembly. Senator Nia Gill has the bill back in the Senate now, and I'm hoping to see that pass. That is a linchpin of the legislation that we passed to protect women. And I hope the legislature will look on it kindly in this session. 
All right, I want to touch on a couple unrelated things, if I can, with you, Senator. Uh, I complained about uh, NJ Transit on Twitter recently, and your cheeky retreat retweet was, have you tried contacting the customer advocate? And the joke there is that there hasn't been a customer advocate at NJ Transit for two years now. I know NJ Transit was a big part of your portfolio when you were in the Senate. Governor Murphy and Kevin Corbett both say, look how much better things are over the last four years. Is that what you're seeing and hearing? Well, are there improvements? Yeah, but why are those things mutually exclusive? The legislature passed and the governor signed into law a bill that in the bill, it created the passenger advocate. We had a tweak to that bill to make sure that that passenger advocate reports directly to the NJ Transit Board and not to the bureaucracy. Why was it left unfilled for two years? I have to make a very cynical but educational guess it's because the bureaucracy and the administration don't want it. They don't want somebody there to speak on behalf of passengers. Doesn't make sense to me. And I would hope again that, that, that the board itself demands that that position be filled and be done in a much more timely manner. And then right. when you have a complaint, you'll have a place to go, David. Right. <laughs> and lastly, uh, on midterms, Republicans say your party is focused too much on social issues, abortion, gender identity, instead of inflation and so-called pocketbook issues. Do you agree with that? And, and why are Democrats more focused on that? Well, I think Democrats are more focused on that because there is more of a threat against our personal liberties by the ultra MAGA extremists that have taken over the party, the ultra MAGA anti-Semitic extremists that have taken over the Republican Party. I would be very happy if my Republican colleagues, people I know who know better, people like John Bramnick and Tom Kane Jr. would speak up against anti-Semitism in their own party. That's part of the social issues. And I can't solve pocketbook issues if I'm being harassed because I'm Jewish. It makes it difficult to, to solve pocketbook issues if I am being forced to carry a child to term when it threatens my health or my well-being or my economic life. So we have to be able to do both in the Democratic Party, but I am really disappointed and some of my colleagues in New Jersey, in the GOP, who I know they know better and they haven't spoken up. All right. Still lots of work to do. Loretta Weinberg, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you, David. And that's Chat Box for this week. Thanks to Chris Russell and Leroy Jones. You can follow me on Twitter at David Cruz and Jay. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for fresh content every day. Be with us next week when we mark the 10th anniversary of Sandy with a special edition of Chatbox. I'm David Cruz. From everyone over here, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Major funding for Chatbox with David Cruz is provided by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Promotional support is provided by Insider NJ, a political intelligence network dedicated to New Jersey political news. Insider NJ is committed to giving serious political players an interactive forum for ideas, discussion, and insight. Online at InsiderNJ.com.